Hello, in this video we're going to implement the authentication in our project. So before we start, we go to our Unity dashboard, we go to our projects, we select our project, and then we need to launch the player authentication service. So here we can add identity providers. Usually you could authenticate your players anonymously, but there's also options for you to use other services like Google, Facebook, Steam. You also have the option to authenticate your players using username and password. So implementing each one of them has a different process, which is by the way, very easy. So let's just use the username and password for now. Later on, you can add as many other providers as you want. So let's add this provider. The username and password is enabled. Now, to go back to the Unity, here, as I mentioned in the previous video, the first script that is going to be executed is menu manager. It is in our first scene and in the awake function here, we are going to initialize the Unity services first. Let's create a function for it, public async void start client service. And we can simply call this here in our awake function. Let me remove that first. So if you remember in the previous video, we created a panel system. Let's go ahead and create a panel and I'm gonna name this one loading. Let me actually duplicate this and name this loading. And let me remove that. So in this loading panel, we don't have anything. Let's just remove those text and buttons. We only have an image that is covering the screen. Basically, every time we want to run a process and during that process, we want the user to not interact with the UI. We're going to cover the UI with this loading panel. Let me actually reduce the transparency to something like this. So we're going to block the access to the user interface using this loading. Let's actually create a script here for it loading menu. If we open this, we're not going to write any code inside this. We're just going to inherit from panel and that's it. Let's go back to the editor so we can attach our loading menu to our panel here. Let's choose loading as ID, attach the container and that's it. I am going to disable that. Also, let's create a background image. So if none of our panels are open, we could have this nice background. So now let's go back to the menu manager. And uh, here in the awake, we are calling start client service. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to close all the panels. And then we're going to use panel manager open loading to open the loading panel. So it would be a lot better if you put the code for your Unity services related functions in the try catch. This way, even if you encounter a problem, your game is not going to crash. And in order to access the Unity services functions, let's go to the package manager and we can go ahead and install the authentication package. So now we can go ahead and use Unity services dot authentication and Unity services dot core. So back to our function here. The first thing we're going to check is to see the service is initialized or not. If it is not initialized, we are going to create a initialization options, set the profile to something, whatever you want and use await Unity services initialize async. So this is going to initialize the Unity services if it has not been initialized previously. Now to avoid repeating the authentication process every time that the user opens the project, first we're going to check to see if there is a session token exists within the authentication service. So this basically says that previously this user on this device has been authenticated. So you don't need to get the credential from the user again. So if the session exists, then we're just going to sign in. Otherwise, we're going to guide the user to the authentication panel. Before we write the logic for these two scenarios, first let's start listening on some events. So I'm going to create a Boolean, name it events initialized. And here, let's go ahead and create a function, name it setup events. So if we call this, it's going to set events initialized to true and it's going to start listening for when the user signed in or signed out or when the session token expired. And here in the 
start client service just between these two we are going to check if the event has not been initialized we're gonna set up events so that's something simple let's create another function here and I'm gonna name it sign in anonymously so first we're gonna open the loading and here we are going to use a try catch and say await authentication service instance sign in anonymously so if we say si you see there is a bunch of options here sign in anonymously with apple with code facebook google and other types of sign-ins later on we could implement those providers and here we have two parts for catch the first one is authentication exception and request failed exception basically if this is getting called then there is something wrong with the credentials but if this is wrong then there's probably something wrong with the connection. So let's go ahead and call sign in anonymously when we have a session token. By the way, if you've already been authenticated with Google or Facebook or any methods with any provider, once this session token has been created for you using that provider, so this time, if you call sign in anonymously, it's going to log in using that provider for you. So you don't need to uh, login for in a specific provider when you have a session token you just sign in anonymously and that's it if you don't have a session token then you are going to open the authentication panel and you allow your player a bunch of different options to authenticate for example you can tell the user there is an option to authenticate using username and password there is an option to use google facebook any there's a bunch of methods here click on one of them and authenticate so i have a bunch of possible areas for error as you can see and i want to handle them before i proceed so let's go to the error menu and here i am going to create an enum called action so every time i am going to open the error menu and when the player clicks on the ok button whatever it is i want to do an action based on the value of this variable here so if action is none then do nothing just close the panel if it is starting the service then do that sign in do that and open auth menu these are the actions i have for now so if we go to the action button here we say first close and then depending on the action do something if it is starting the service then call the menu manager singleton start client service which is the function we just created here and if it is sign in then just sign in anonymously using menu manager the function we have created right here so if it is open auth menu then close all other panels and open any panel with this id which we're going to create right now and the same thing for our menu manager here in the start client service when there is no session token we're just going to open a panel called auth we haven't created the panel yet we're going to do it right now so let's go to the editor so here i am going to create two different menus the first one is main which is going to be our main menu if i open this it's just gonna contain a text and a button for sign out that's for now by the way we're gonna add a bunch of other options later so that's the main and here is the auth menu so it contains a couple of inputs let me zoom in so one of them is for username the other one is for password we have a button to sign in using this username and password a button to sign up using this username and password that's just a small image to use as divider and a button to sign in as guest so we could also add a button to sign in with google facebook and a bunch of other buttons uh, for different identity providers let's just use username and password and anonymous for now obviously we need a couple of scripts one of them is authentication menu and the other one would be the main menu so let's open them both remove all of that and inherit from panel the same thing for our menu here it is inherit from panel 
let's use TM Pro and Unity Engine UI for both of them. In the main menu, let's get the reference to the name text and the log out button. And we need to create a function to sign out. And let's overwrite the initialize and add the listener for our logout button. And in the authentication menu, we need to access the username and password inputs, sign in and sign up and anonymous buttons. Let's overwrite the open function and set the value of the inputs to null. There is a function to say anonymous sign in for this button. We are going to create one for the sign in, another one for sign up. Also, I'm going to create a function and name it is password valid. So it's going to return a Boolean. First of all, the password based on the Unity services conditions should be between eight and 30 characters. So if it is not, then we're going to return false. Then it should has an uppercase, a lowercase, a digit and a symbol, which we are going to check for all of that. And if it has all of them, we're going to return true. So we're going to use that in sign in and sign up. Let's also add the listeners for them in the initialize function. We're going to override it and just add the listeners and call base initialize after that. Now let's go to the editor. And if we select our main, we can attach the main menu for the ID. I'm just going to use main. That is the container. That is the text. That is the sign out button. So let's do the authentication menu now. So ID, we're going to choose auth. That's the container. Input username and password. Sign in, sign up and anonymous buttons. So that's it for our menus. Now, if we go to the error menu, let's finish this. Calling open, we also get another variable of type action. This dot action equals to that action. We can also overwrite the open function of the panel and set the action to none before that. Actually, let's go to the menu manager and to make our work a little bit easier, I am going to create a method called show error. So it's going to take an action, an error, and the text for the button. So the first thing is going to close the loading if it is open. And then it's going to get the singleton for the error panel. And then it's just going to open it using these values. I don't want to repeat this process, getting singleton and stuff like that in every single scenario. So let's just do it like this. Now, also need a function here in the menu manager for sign out. Here, we're going to call the authentication service instance sign out, close everything and just open the auth panel. So in the main menu, we can simply in the sign out function call menu manager singleton sign out and back to the menu manager. Let's create two more functions, one of them for sign in with username and password. So it's going to be an async function takes a username and password. First, it's going to open the loading and in the try catch, it will use authentication service instance sign in with username and password. And if it encounters an error, gonna call this show error function. And if it is a connection error, it's gonna call this. Third one for sign up with username and password. Basically the same thing, but it's going to call the sign up with username and password. Now let's go and take care of the errors here in the sign in anonymously. Here we show this error. Here we show this error. So basically if there is a problem with the credentials, we're going to open the auth menu in our error action button. And if it is a problem with the connection, we are going to call the sign in one more time. And here for the start client service, if we encounter an error, we're just going to call this function and we're going to start the service if we click on the retry button here. So let's go to the setup event 
now we can perform certain actions based on certain events if we are signed out for any reason we're going to close everything and go to the auth menu if the session is expired for any reason we're going to call sign in anonymously and if we successfully signed in then we're going to do this we're going to create a function name it sign in confirm async and let's call it here if we are signed in now first we're gonna check to see if the authentication service instance player name is null or not if it is null then I'm just gonna rename it to player later on we give the player the option to change its name and we close everything and we open the main panel so that's it I think for menu manager and if we go to the main menu let's create a function to set the name text to the authentication service instance.player name and then we can override the open function of the panel so every time the main panel gets opened we are going to update that text and finally in the authentication menu in the sign in first we're gonna get the input username and password if they're not empty then we are going to use menu manager singleton sign in with username and password now here in the sign up we're gonna do something similar we're gonna get the inputs first we check if they're not null then we are make sure that the password is valid in that case we're gonna try to sign up otherwise we're gonna show an error saying password does not match requirements insert a uppercase lowercase digit number and symbol with minimum eight and maximum 30 characters so that's it let's go ahead and check the project see if it is working i am going to start as you can see it's going to open the authentication panel here let's sign in anonymously so i'm going to click that you see that it's going to lock my access to the screen and it's going to log in so this is our player name and if I stop the project now and if I start it again because we have a session token now it should immediately jump to the main menu and skip the authentication menu because we are already signed in so if we sign out here we can sign in again and this is a process we can do so let's sign in this is player 3183 so if I use a username and password and then sign up it is going to change the player name because this is a different account now so if I sign out now and uh, sign in as a guest it's gonna use the 7032 player because this is the last credentials that exists so if I stop it play it again it should sign in again so basically this is the authentication system if we try to sign in it's gonna give us an error and if we enter the correct credentials it's gonna sign in as I mentioned we could attach other providers to our project right here under the sign in as guest we could place another button saying sign in with Google and in order to use any of other unity services we need to do the authentication first so now the first step of our work is done in the next videos we could focus on the other services we could add a bunch of buttons here in this menu for lobby friends leaderboards matchmaking and any other services that you want so i think in the next video i'm gonna do the leaderboards i'm gonna finish this one here and make sure to like and subscribe thanks for watching